Hey, Yo, what's going on guys? Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the round two matchups, the playoff expectations, and just basically uh, going to do a little bit of a recap for round two. Yeah, bro, we haven't talked in a while. We're definitely going to talk about the losers of the first round, but for now, we're just going to we're just gonna talk about what's going on right now. We don't want to talk about the past. <laughs> so, every single series right now, well, it's this what I'm going to say changed after yesterday, but it was 2-1, all of them. Now the Nuggets obviously tied it up with the Timberwolves, and let's let's just actually go ahead and uh, talk about that one first. I think it's the most exciting matchup so far. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I definitely think that people all reacted, obviously, as we saw about the Nuggets going down 0-2. It was definitely surprising, but the Nuggets are a team that if they would have pulled up and gotten like swept or even gentlemen swept, I would have been shocked as hell. Because there are some other teams that if you told me like, oh, they were like a one-year wonder, I could have believed you, but the Nuggets like. They, like, I, it, it, I couldn't accept it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, definitely, you know, it, it, it's funny because people swore that they were washed. And I think at first, the, the Minnesota size, pause, was a lot to handle, pause. I just think that, obviously, when it's a team, when you do, when they've dealt with, with other teams, like the Lakers, for example, the Lakers have the ability to play big, but they didn't really do that. And when you come off a series like that and you see so much size in Minnesota, I mean, literally one through, one through five, they're tall-ass players. They're long. They're all good defenders. I think it was a lot to handle. Plus, Jamal Murray was obviously a little bit injured in the beginning of the series. And we've always said, I think Jamal Murray is really the key to unlocking that team. He's really, he becomes an all-star, a superstar in the playoffs. And I think that's what really takes that team to another level. And Jokic, uh, too. You know, obviously, at first, it was a little bit hard for him to to figure out like, Rudy Gobert and Cat back-to-back. But now I think he feels comfortable again. And I feel like the whole team feels comfortable. And I think... I think they're just probably gonna win the series. You know, they they let them get comfortable. Minnesota let them, let them win, and now I think it, it's really over for them. Yeah, I think the Nuggets are gonna win Game Five, and then they might just go ahead and close it down against Game Six. The Nuggets, when they try, still the best team in the NBA. Jokic, when he's locked in, still the best player in the NBA. I will say though, I, I think Jamal Murray should have been suspended at least one game for yeah, what he did, throwing the heat pack on the court. People are gonna talk about that if the Nuggets end up winning the series. But, I mean, we'll, it already happened, or we can just talk about the now. And I do think that, unfortunately, because I, I wanted the Nuggets to lose, then they are going to win. But, got to give a lot of credit to Anthony Edwards, ascending to be one of the top five players in the NBA, no question about it. Yep. And, it and the Timberwolves end up winning is going to be because of him. Definitely. So now, let's talk about an Eastern Conference series. Probably, in my opinion, the least um, interesting series out of all four of them and it's going to be Celtics versus Cavaliers yeah we just got some bad news so I don't know Mitchell's not going to play game four meaning the series is over no question about it it was already looking like a, it was already looking like a bad series from the start but Donald Mitchell was able to get them one game but if he's not going to play the cast has been a disappointment Garland has been a disappointment yep. the team's just looking not that good which we talked about when they were going on that big run during the regular season definitely and the Celtics too honestly the Celtics they haven't really impressed me and a lot, a lot of people are saying oh it's because they're playing down to the competition which is something that they've done for the past two years but I think it's still at the end of the day I feel like they, they're not able to take care of business especially at home I heard that they were a really bad home team so uh, yeah I think they've been like a really bad home team and stuff like that and I think stuff like that to me is Oh, yeah, it's unacceptable. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I, I, to me, stuff like that is unacceptable. Uh, unacceptable. And it's hard for me to take them as seriously as I should. But the Cavaliers, they never scare me, to be never, honest. Man. They never really scare me. They went all the way to Game 7 against the Magic, who are the least experienced team, I think, in the entire playoffs. And to me, they never scare me at all. To me, they, they were always a bit of a joke. And I, it really got me heated when people would talk really good about them. Because to me, this, is, this team is a joke, and we saw it last year. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I honestly, like, the Celtics should be, the Celtics should have swept them, honestly. You know what I'm saying? To me, it's like unbelievable that they did it. Yeah, the biggest combo with them is is Donald Mitchell leaving, which is looking like a yes. It's looking yeah. like a damn near for sure. And let's move on to back to the West. Another great series, the series that I'm keeping up with the most, the Thunder against the Mavericks. The Mavericks right now leading up 2-1, which I'm very happy about. I definitely, I wouldn't say I got scared, but after the first game, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I saw, you know, I'm like, the Thunder kind of pulled up, blew them out of the building, and Luka was looking injured, which he still is. But I got to give a shout-out to the role players. P.J. Washington playing insane, kind of playing like what Porzingis was supposed to do years ago. He's being... That's so random for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say, you know, a powerful that can shoot. Got to give a lot of credit to Luke and Kyrie, who have been, been, been able to get him a lot of open shots. I've been able to get Derrick Jones Jr., who has turned into like a great role player for them. Honestly. I got to give a lot of credit, man. I remember when he signed in the offseason, I was like, oh, you know, solid pickup, but he's really become a starter like for them. fast starter. I'm, right. I'm really happy for him. That's a guy that I've always, obviously, since he's from Miami, well, since he played in Miami. Yeah, 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 that's always a guy, yeah, that's always a guy that I've always like liked a lot. And then Derek Lively, a fat rookie, too. And Daniel Godfrey and Lively being a great 
yeah. combo. Like one goes to the bench, the other one comes in. That was a lot of energy on the court. Yeah. And Luca, obviously, like I said, playing hurt, but still trying to give give an effort. Uh, it's funny because I want to say, oh, once he starts playing better, but I don't know because he's only gonna get more tired as as the series goes along. He's gonna have his moments that he still turns up. You know that Jonathan is gonna kick in, but. I think they can beat the. I think they can definitely beat the Thunder. I think they will. I don't know in the next round against the Timberwolves or Nuggets. Without 100 percent Luca, I, I don't know if they're gonna be able to get it done. Um, you guys know we haven't been the biggest believers in the Thunder. We haven't been the biggest fans of them. But I would say I think they're playing a bit weird, a bit timid. I feel like the way that when when I see them play, I feel like they're not playing to their true potential. I'm not really sure why. I think a big reason, and this is only a guess, is is Josh Giddey's inability to be a good playoff player. I mean, we're seeing it. This is a guy that. Uh, it was obvious that he was not going to succeed in the playoffs, and, and it's even more obvious as the series goes along. Because, I, honestly, it really feels like he's not adding kind of anything, to be honest. He's not, not even really playmaking like that, not because really. right now the ball is in Josh Giddy's hands. Excuse me, it's in uh, Jalen Williams' hands, or, or, or obviously Shea. And we kind of saw that a little bit with Ben Simmons in the Sixers. I remember when Jimmy Butler was there, they made the decision to let Jimmy Butler run the offense, and they kind of just put Ben Simmons in the dunker spot. And... Josh Giddy, he can't even do that because he's not athletic. He's exactly. not a power forward type. So uses that though. Yeah, <laughs> it's like what 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 is he really bringing to the team? And I think that's really slowing them down a lot. The Lou Dor also has, hasn't been able to find his offense, which makes sense because he's tryharding on defense. Try try harding. <laughs> that was <laughs> too much. Yeah, nah. And there's like some of, some of the calls in this series have been a little bit. Uh, ah, they they looked a little bad. I think you can agree with that. Some of the calls. I know even. Nah, I've been keeping it over. Yeah, they yeah. they're destroying Luca and. Yeah. I was setting out earlier. If Luca was a player that complained less, people would feel more bad for him. But he's always complaining. If there's one thing as an honest Luca fan that I can say he needs to stop is complaining. Everything else, the I suppose the ball hugging this and that, I can make excuses. But the them complaining, it is what it is. But I I think we can we're, we both agree that the Mavericks are gonna win another five or six, probably six. If they win today, then I'll say five. But I'll be shocked if the Thunder go out that bad. Yeah, I, I could still see the Thunder. Thunder winning, bro. I really do think that Thunder, the Thunder have another gear to turn. I, you know, something to me, this is super, super like to the side. I thought Gordon Hayward was gonna be better for them, and I thought he was gonna be able to like kind of play those Josh Giddey minutes. Anything. He's really been like ass. points, like <laughs> yeah, to my bro, ass. He's twenty minutes away from getting the record of most minutes played without a point. Ass, 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 ass. So yeah, that that I, really hurts me. Yeah, and then moving on to the final series, a series that probably the most exciting really? because. Because uh, the games saying, have been close. Tim Rose have been blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up. Yeah, yeah. This one, everybody's talking about it. The last game was a blow up, but before that, game three was an amazing game. And time obviously Knicks versus Pacers. Historic matchup. It, it sucks. It sucks the way the series it, it's looking like it's going to go. The Knicks just kind of like running out of like players. Like, yeah. like OG Ananobi now is injured. Salted. Obviously, Randall has been out for a minute. No, Mitchell Robinson and B seems to have generally ended his playoff run. And and yeah, Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart and DeVincenzo, like the power Tri- of friendship. Yeah, Tri- Tri- are best. Tri- already, bro. Josh Hart. DeVincenzo, before the list, this last game, was averaging 29 points yeah. of 56 percent <laughs> from three. Josh Hart was playing every single minute of every game. And Jalen Brunson was looking like one of the a top three players in the NBA. You mean he scored uh, with like four back to back points. Yeah, it was looking like crazy. something that Jordan has, like only a Jordan <laughs> had done. Yeah, yeah. So it sucks that the pace is looking like they're going to win. But yeah, it's funny because they, they had talked about the Knicks and they were saying, oh, they're, they're like a flu playoff run, kind of like how the Hawks were. I don't and, think so, bro. And bro, the, fuck, the, the Pacers are that. <laughs> you know the Pacers are that, straight bro. Straight injured team. Straight injured, bro. I feel bad for the Knicks because I really do like what they're doing. I really like that team. I think they're they're like a gritty team, and I really like that. I think a lot of their pieces fit. Well, together, obviously, what you were saying with the power of friendship, but I love players like Josh Hart and DiVincenzo. Like, shout out to DiVincenzo. Holy shit, what a great season for that man. Like, Definitely. bro, straight up. And then, but nah, with the OG Ananobi, he's soft as hell. Everybody knows that. Uh, there's, like, reports that he was being real soft with the <laughs> Raptors. And now we're seeing it now. But nah, yeah, I think it's unfortunate I was going for the Knicks. But it, it is looking like the Pacers were going to win. I will say I knew the Pacers were going to have a game like this. Of course. That was obvious as hell. It just sucks. I, I, I think if, I wish the Knicks would have won game three so that this game didn't matter that much. And they could just maybe win it out in five. Yeah, that nigga got when Neymar hit that shot. Cause that was a fake shot. <laughs> like, he looked mad as well. <laughs> but yeah, bro. Uh, the, the, the most frustrating, the most frustrating thing about this to me is that the Celtics are about to have the cakes run to the finals, yeah. literally of all time. I'm just hoping that somebody from the West, I don't even care if it's the Thunder, beats them in the NBA finals. I don't really want the Celtics to win because it feel like it feel fake. Yeah. But just to wrap up the video, our official predictions. I got the Mavs, Nuggets. Celtics and Pacers moving on to the next round. No surprising, we always, you know, we always be matching opinions. What? 
<laughs> so, yeah, that's basically, that's basically going to wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed our prediction. Give us your predictions down below. I think the most controversial one, the one that could go either way still, I think is Thunder versus Mavericks. I think the other ones. Well, no, no, no. I guess Nuggets and Timberwolves too. Yeah. But yeah. I think the, the Eastern Conference series that are like wrapped up, I think. Yeah. I think it's too much for, for the Knicks. They could maybe, you know, honestly, they could push it to a game seven and maybe win it. Like that could still happen. Yeah, they could just win game five. Man. Yeah. But that's going to do it. We're going to come back soon with videos, like I said, about the losers because it's, it's funny because it feels like a lot of the teams that we usually care about like already gone, the Heat, the Lakers, the Suns. Yeah, your Mavericks are still there. Well, I'm saying like them. Oh, gotcha, well, like gotcha. the, like the, the Clippers, the Lakers, the Warriors, the Suns, the Heat, uh, the Bucks. All those teams are out of the playoffs. They have a lot of things to figure out in the offseason, and we're for sure going to talk about it. So. Yeah, definitely. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and peace out. Peace out.